Hi. Today I'm talking about another GUI framework for Go. This time it's called Unison. You might not have heard about it. It's not a well-known one and it's a bit small. It's developed by a person called Richard Wilkes. Uh, thank you very much, Richard, for uploading this. There are a few more contributors here. Let me check. But before going on, here is a note that you should bear in mind. Unison was developed with the needs of my personal projects in mind, so may not be a good fit for your particular needs. I'm open to suggestions and so on. So this is a personal framework, so to say, and uh, you have to check the requirements, whether it kind of fits your bill and whether it fulfills your requirements. Now, it's very straightforward. It's uh, go-like. You have basically, a, say, a button struct. You create a button and like here with new button, and then it's rendered and you have layout options as in all of those frameworks. Now, let me show you an example here. If we run this go run main go then we get this dialog here that demonstrates the capabilities of this framework and i would say so first of all it takes a little bit uh, my um, themes so on linux at least it uses my theme colors to some extent and so at least on my machine it looks a bit like a macOS framework like an old macOS. um theme. Now here are some buttons right that you can click and you have dialogues that also look kind of Mac-like. You have a warning dialogue here, you have an error dialogue like old Mac dialogues. Then you have links, you have icons, you have these kind of check marks, you have a progress bar that can also be indeterminate. You have these little menus, sometimes they are called selections. You have text fields, mostly single line. There is a multi-line text framework, but it doesn't have rich text capabilities yet. Now here you can see the scroll bars have some alpha blending. That's of course um, uh, the question whether you like that or not. Uh, I'm I'm not opposed to it, but you know the fact that this is over the text, drawn over the text, might be a showstopper for some people. It has image support and it has more. It also has performance tables here. And you can even expand and collapse sub rows in this table. You have check marks built in. That's quite important. Apparently, the author here has a lot to do with tables. And that's good to have. Then it also has. Let me show you a capability of docking images, changing here the order and stuff like that, which is also very useful. So you can create some kind of sub images and have docks, and you can also have tooltips. Now, you also have some limited markdown support here. Unfortunately, not with editing, only for display. But what's cool about it is that it has embedded images. So it's basically make a markdown support and allows you to, for instance, display online help without you know, going full HTML. And it's very lightweight, of course. And if we remove this, what else is there? Well, it also has SVG support. Now, there are plenty of SVG packages for Go um, with more or less good rendering. It depends on which kind of SVG features you're using, but generally they work. So you wouldn't need that necessarily, but it's good if it's built in. I don't know which library or package she uses for that one, but it should work fine enough. If, if not, you have to might have to tweak the SVG to not use newer features. Right. So that's a, a neat framework. And as you can see in the source code, it's implemented in a very straightforward way and it's very easy to understand. And so it should also be easy to extend if you need to. And for instance, you could fork this and add your own type of widgets or make changes if the author doesn't have time to make the changes. And it's an active development. You can see here, last uh, commit 
two days ago or maybe even today, I don't know. So uh, there's constant work on it, as you can see here in the repo. And the repo is one flat repository, which is something I personally like. Some people don't like that. But I think it's just easier to maintain, easier to understand, and you don't have to jump around in different folders and sub packages and so on. You just have everything in one package, and that's good. And then as the usual structure here, you have the command sub package with the examples and a few other help utilities. So that's pretty cool. And check it out. Uh, maybe it fits your requirements, and then I would uh, definitely give it a go. Uh, of course, it's not like any of the larger frameworks I've talked about, and you won't be able to display, say, videos in this one. But uh, yeah, for simple, straightforward applications that should have a kind of Mac-like desktop feel, uh, that might be the right choice. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time. Bye.